Hey there, internet. It's me, Broken Terrain. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. This craft is very special. It's a Valentine's Day present for my wife, and I'm going to show you how I did it right after the drop. So my daughter and I were walking through Dollar Tree the other day, one of our favorite stores. And what do my eyes behold? But look at this thing. It's a little garden dome. I love it. Oh, man. And immediately I thought, how cool would it be to do a little, uh, a little scene inside of it? And, uh, well, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So I think I'm going to pick out a little figure from my box of shame here. A rare look at my box of oh shame. I've got tons of Reaper Bones figures. I go searching Amazon and uh, look for cheap minis and just uh, snag up ones that uh, I like that are priced, priced to move. <laughs> and so I start looking through my box, looking for some really cool, some female badass character to kind of uh, fit the image I have of my wife. Uh, she's a... Uh, badass chick I love her very much and I want to do something really cool for her and then I find this this package here it's uh, one of those Dungeons and Dragons whiz kids they're already primed and that's gonna work great because as I've mentioned it's very cold where I am right now and I wouldn't be able to get out there and prime it so a pre uh, pre primed figure perfect I've got this uh, sorceress chick with some wings and um, I think it's going to work perfectly for uh, what I'd like to do. My wife tends to be a, uh, a druid connoisseur. She and I played World of Warcraft together, and uh, it was her druid with my Death Knight. We made a, a great team, and uh, I want to honor, honor that time and her with that. So I picked the figure, clean it up a little bit, paint it up. I'm not going to bore you with my paint job. Uh, there's other really uh, masterful mini painters out there on YouTube and uh, the rest of the internet. Uh, I encourage you to check them out. And uh, you know what? If you do want to see me paint minis in, in detail, uh, throw that in the comments and let me know because I would love to. I love painting minis. And uh, if I could uh, double up on the time it takes to paint them and uh, put out a video or two for you guys uh, that you like, let me know. I'm going to uh, take the dome and measure out a circle of XPS foam. And then I'm going to cut a little bit uh, inside that circle because of the thickness of the plastic of the dome. Uh, I get it about right and then clean the circle up. And that's going to be the base and then I want to do a little spiral staircase. So using that circle, I can cut a, a, a two piece spiral. It's going to go up about an inch. I've got the figure uh, uh, placed. Uh, you, it's very important to size everything, the entire project as you go. Uh, this particular mini has wings. So not every uh, mini is going to have the same issues. This one, because of the wingspan, um, I have to be very careful of where I place the mini inside. And then once I uh, confirm that everything's going to work as I intend, I begin to cut out the stairs for the spiral staircase, just carefully uh, cutting into uh, and trying not to go too far and then cleaning up the cut for the stairs. You know, remove the bulk from uh, your first big cuts then go back in and clean them up. I plan to remove the base for this figure, so I want the stairs to be very uh, small. Normally for gameplay, you wouldn't make stairs like this because a, a character can't stand on it with their uh, standard base. But this is going to be kind of a diorama. Well, not kind of. It, <laughs> it will be a diorama. And so I'm going to cut the base off the figure, glue it directly to the terrain, and this... Uh, these steps here are going to look more in scale with her tiny little uh, miniature feet. Uh, once I get the steps cut out, I slope the edges uh, so that I can get uh, foliage around the edges so that uh, the entire scene looks colorful and green from a complete 360 degree 
uh, view. And then I hit the whole piece with tin foil for texture. And because of the way I cut this foam, the pen alone was not creating the same stone texture I'm used to or the lines that I was used to. So I had to go in with an X-Acto first, uh, cut those lines nice and clean with the knife. And then I went back in with the pen uh, and exaggerated those lines. And I cut the top stair off because it wasn't working. She wasn't standing well. And uh, even though I'm gonna cut the base off, I want her positioned well and she needs to be positioned with her wings in a certain way. Next, I wanted to add uh, a light feature, uh, just a green LED. My wife's favorite color happens to be green. So my, my uh, angel druid is painted with some green robe over, uh, over leather. And I'm gonna, have, uh, I'm gonna have the druid pulling forth this massive plant and it'll be glowing with magic uh, coming up through the earth. So I do my trick where I melt the tip a hot glue stick and I got these really cool crystal clear glue sticks for this I mean you can see right through it it's like a tube of glass it's fantastic and I just jam the LED up there spread a lot of that excess glue around and I kind of want to make uh, like a tentacle although I it's gonna be like a vine like a, a big sprout, bean sprout or, or tree sprout. And so I'm gonna take the X-Acto knife, shave bits off, and then with my hot glue gun, I'm going to texture this whole, uh, this whole piece to make it look uh, organic. Once I get it textured, uh, I wanted to test, make sure the lighting effect is is what I'm looking for oh it looks fantastic I'm really happy with it I add some of those cut pieces as uh, like blades or leaves or uh, offshoots of the main growth to this uh, druidic vine and then I glue it down into place do a little hot glue on the underside just to keep both of those uh, the prongs for the LED in place. I don't want those moving around. And uh, now I need to cut a hole in the plastic base because the button battery there is going to stick out too far from the foam. And I also need a way to uh, remove the battery when we don't want the LED on or to replace the battery when we run out. So I scratch where I uh, need to cut, and then when I attempt to cut, it fails. Uh, the blade breaks, and the, the plastic that uh, these domes are made of is really flimsy. So I uh, was hoping that the hot glue gun would melt through the plastic, and it does. Uh, if you push the hot, and I have a high temperature, so, uh, uh, if you're working with a low temperature gun, maybe you don't melt through the plastic. I don't know. Maybe a Dremel is the way to go for you. But I'm able to push through and uh, combination uh, melting holes and then cleaning up the excess with an X-Acto. I'm able to cut a hole for the battery. I'm a little off with my first go, but I can use that first cut to figure out where to actually cut and then on my second cut I nail it it's perfect then go in with your white PVA glue cover the uh, base of it and then I'm gonna flock with my craft sand and I'm using uh, a two sand combination there's a, a grittier green sand with a much finer purple sand I like the two sand effect it creates uh, a lot more interest in my uh, in my ground or floor flock. Then you'll just tap off the excess, wait for that to dry. And then once it's dry, I've uh, put a little screw in there as a handle so I can hold on to it because I want to paint the sides as well. And I'm going to hit this with the half black matte, uh, paint, half black matte paint and matte Mod Podge. This is going to give me a base coat of black over everything, and it's gonna harden that foam and lock that sand down really good. 
then I turn to Grey Storm. It's quickly becoming a new favorite gray for me. I really like the color, and I'm going to do the whole stairway starting in this Grey Storm color. Next up, good old Mississippi Mud. I'm going to hit all of the ground around the stairs, and I'm going to be extremely careful not to touch that hot glue with any of this paint. I really want to keep that crystal clear uh, uh, hot glue stick free of any of this gray or any of this mud brown. And then I'm going to take my granite gray and my elephant gray, and instead of these uh, being utilized as my base gray colors because I'm using gray storm I'm gonna do my individual brick trick and so I'm gonna paint bricks out in the elephant and the granite gray then I'm coming in with apple barrels khaki I'm gonna also do the same thing with the different little bricks and then finally for good measure my fourth color burnt umber and I'm just gonna hit this whole little thing with these four colored bricks just spreading out and varying the colors. It's gonna look fantastic when it's time for the wash. I'm gonna cover the stairway and the ground in my homemade black wash. This is gonna darken everything down a little bit, mute these colors. The black's gonna go into the recesses, the uh, brickwork cracks. It's gonna look fantastic. Once it's dry, I'm gonna come back in with uh, the granite gray again and I'm just gonna dry brush hit the edges of the brickwork the uh, the bits of texture that we did with the tin foil all this stuff is going to pop as I lightly dry brush the brickwork brighten it back up just a bit make it look a little old and uh, and really accentuate the the lines man that's looking fantastic I'm really starting to get excited about this one once again, we're hitting the thing with white PVA glue. Brush it out so you get nice coverage. And then you're gonna go back in with your blended turf, your grounded turf, and just sprinkle it all over. Make sure you get all those edges. And that's why I did these slope stairs. So I have this nice ring of green turf that's gonna be around the entire little dome when I'm done. Pat it in, shake the extra off. Now I want to weather the stairs. So there's gonna be certain parts of the brickwork where I'm gonna squirt some glue, spread it around with a brush, and then I'm gonna put some turf into those areas as well. It's gonna like uh, look like moss is growing upon some of the uh, brick areas. It's gonna weather it and look really nice. Set it aside to dry, and once dry, <laughs> more white PVA glue just uh, spread it around. I, da I like to dab it in with the brush. It's gonna, this white PVA glue is gonna serve two purposes. It's gonna help lock down that first uh, layer of turf, but at the same time, it's really gonna grip our static grass. This is my homemade grass. It's just some hemp rope cut into fine little uh, threads, uh, shaken up with a little bit of, of bright green spring grass. Uh, shake it on the glue and then try to coax it up with a tool and, and uh, some gently ap applied breath and get it to stand as best as, as best as possible. Then uh, I want this piece to look good whether the light is on or not. And so this, the, the magic sprout or tree cannot just be uh, clear glue stick. So I take my army painter green wash and I do the whole thing with the green wash and I, I really like the way it looks though maybe it comes out a little flat and a little dark. So I'm going to take a spring green and just dry brush all that texture that I put in with the hot glue gun back when I made this uh, magic tree sprout here. It ends up looking really nice, and now I don't have to worry whether there's a battery in it or not. It looks like a great little showpiece. I'm going to pull out some clump foliage, and together with my hot glue gun, I'm going to decorate the piece with clump foliage. This is going to vary my turf and make the piece look a bit more alive and lush with vegetation. 
I recommend getting a shaping tool like this. This tool came in incredibly handy when it came time for putting in the clump foliage and for the rest of the decorating that I'm uh, going to do with this project. I recommend getting one of these. Uh, I'm not burning my fingers on the hot glue and I can really get everything in exactly where I want it. And then I go back to these great little craft flowers from Blue Moon Studio, these UV resin flowers. They're made for pouring resin over, uh, but I use them for crafting. The scale of these little blossoms is just incredible. I use some carefully applied hot glue, and then with some tweezers I can pick up, place those flowers into a relatively good position inside the hot glue. And then I go back to that little tool, and I can just shape and pull and pose these little flowers into this hot glue while it dries. I love it. I'm gonna decorate the whole thing with these little red flowers. Dot this piece with lots of little pops of this red color. I love this little bunch on the stair in particular. And then I only have a few more white flowers. I used them all up uh, with my last project, but I do have a couple. And because this is for the missus, I really want it to look pretty. So I pop these in as well, these little white flowers. Oh man, I love this piece. And I hope she loves it too. It's time to add my figure, my goddess druid, my angel. I take my pliers, I cut the base away from her tiny little miniature feet a little super glue and I put her into position. This is the first time I've seen her down here without the base. She looks incredible. I'm gonna hold her steady. I'm gonna come in with a little more uh, super glue. Just strengthen these joints up a little bit. Don't need to worry too much. She's gonna be protected under this dome. Then I put the disc in, a little hot glue underneath, slide that dome on, everything fits in nice and tight. No glue on the dome, just the disc. The dome is going to be held in by the tension of the disc. Oh man, it looks fantastic. I hope she loves it. I love her. I love this project. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, for watching. If you like this video, smash the like button. Please, if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button too. It would really help me out. Share it with family and friends. Down below in the description of the video, I have a link to my subscribe star. And uh, if you go there for 10 a month, you get access to my pen and paper game, some templates, and some of the inside details of what's going on in my mind for crafting. And I've also got a, a t-shirt shop down there with some designs. All of that helps the channel out, helps keep things going. Thank you so much, everybody. Like each other, love each other, and craft on.